Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is very dedicated to the freshers. So I'll be talking about some of the tips required for the freshers, especially for those who are trying to get into the data science and analytics domain. So I shall be discussing with you four important tips, which will definitely be beneficial for you. Apart from that, I'll also have some bonus tips to share. So let's get started. <laughs> So as I already told you that today's video is dedicated to the freshers out here, 2020, 2021 graduates, be it coming from computer science background or mechanical background or anybody, anybody and everybody who is interested to learn data science and analytics, want to get a career, want to have a career in this particular field, this domain, they can easily follow this video and they will easily be beneficial by taking inputs from this video. So let's get started. So what are some of the tips required for freshers in 2021? Because uh, post COVID situation, it's not post COVID, it's still we are in the COVID situation. So things have changed. The job industries have changed, the jobs have been impacted and there is a lot more jobs which are currently there in the data analysis areas as compared to the data science areas. So a lot of things are there. We will also discuss in depth. Let's try to get started with it. So I have noted down four important tips for freshers. Now, somehow it could also be applicable for the experienced professionals. But uh, as I said, the video is all about freshers. So let's get started. So the four major points are that many people, many people who get into data science and analytics, their main idea is to uh, be a data scientist, to be a machine learning engineer, to be an AI engineer. Well, that is fine. But my, my suggestion to people is that you should always explore what are the different career options in the field of data science and analytics. Data scientist, machine learning engineer, AI engineer are not the only options available. You can go for a researcher roles, you can go for deep learning, you can go for computer vision expert roles. But one role which is least talked about is going to be data analyst and business analyst roles. Apart from that, we also have some BI roles as well, some Power BI developer or Tableau developer roles. Now, data analysis, EDA, statistics, Python, these are kind of the initial pillars of learning to the data science to get started with the machine learning part. But with the data analyst concepts as well, you can easily get a job as compared to data science because learning data science, if it is taking, for example, six months, then you can easily learn data analysis in three months. Now, again, timeline is just an example which I'm taking, but the idea is that it's easier as compared to the machine learning, NLP and all those things, right? Obviously, there is no stoppage. If you are getting a job in data analysis, you can easily switch to data science and future. Nothing to worry about that part. Okay, so data analysis is one thing to explore in case you need, what are the skills required to become a data analyst or a business analyst or a BI developer, then probably you should get started with either, of, either one of the languages like Python, Java or R. That is one thing. Apart from that, uh, SQL knowledge is very important. Apart from that, of course, statistical knowledge is required because you will have to do EDA, explore data, explore hand, uh, missing values, outlier detection, and all those things. That also plays a vital role. And uh, Microsoft Excel also is one of the tools which you can get started with. And uh, either one of the BI tools is fine. ClickSense, Power BI, or Tableau. If you master one of them, I think your job will be eased up. That's the first point. Now, the second point is going to be resume preparation. Now, uh, many people don't give priorities to resume preparation. Normal human tendency is that we create one resume and we start applying for multiple applications, for multiple jobs. Now, conversion rate or the resume selection rate in that procedure is way less than the the advanced techniques. So the advanced techniques are that we should always prepare three to four different types of resumes. Now, once you get started with the statistics part, you will try, you will understand what is A-B testing, right? So we have to follow A-B testing for resume preparation as well. We always have to prepare two or three types of resumes. Uh, one could be very data analysis centric. One could be machine learning centric. One could be focused on NLP, something like that. And based on that, you can probably apply. So your chances will be better. Apart from that, 
one very hectic process is also something like you have to prepare resumes based on the job description now for example the job is asking for nlp and if you don't have nlp in your resume obviously there are high chances that your resumes will not get screened now if it is not getting screened how will you get the interview calls right so you have always have to prepare resumes based on job description however it's a lengthy process but it's one of the most fruitful processes you will definitely see results very soon okay now the third important point is going to be creating connections now i just have linkedin logo here just don't get carried away with that uh, what what do we mean by the third point is that we have to create social networking we always have to be participating in various hackathons i have seen many people who have got jobs as a fresher through hackathons now they try to create connections uh, they try to team uh, form a team your teammate could be an indian could be a canadian could be somebody and that's where you start creating connections and once you start creating connections on linkedin definitely you will get more reach right so it helps you in job uh, job hunting process at least job hunt or the internship process and once you get internship getting a job becomes a little bit easier as compared to people who don't have internships okay now the fourth point is very important very very important because i have seen many people who i have seen many resumes like i have seen more than 2000 3000 resumes in my career from the past one or two years i have seen people picking up projects blindly from kaggle or github writing down in your resumes in my youtube channel also many people have asked me that sir can i pick this project as my resume uh, so that i can write it down in my resume so i am kind of okay with that but you should always understand what you are doing so you you should always have the business understanding now you might ask me that i am a fresher how do i have to have the business understanding now obviously business understanding is not rocket science you can start reading about telecom and as a customer because you are also a customer you know what your problems will be what could be the problems of a company and that's where you understand the business you understand the problem and then you get started with the projects the main idea of the fourth point is that end to end machine learning project or end to end whatever you are doing you have to do end to end because in data science machine learning interviews they will only be asking about what you have done because it's huge so they don't expect you to know everything but whatever you are writing in your resumes you have to be crystal clear about that you have to know how to deploy it you have to know flask zango uh, if you have done it through heroku deployment or gcp deployment you have to know about it you should be answerable on those questions you can expect anything let's say you have done some basic project end to end and you have deployed it on aws ec2 instance so you could expect something you could you could expect any questions related to aws it could be anything related to how did you convert your code to apis it could be anything right so the main idea is that starting from business understanding domain knowledge everything plays a very vital role so whenever you are working on some projects writing down in your resumes be very crystal clear on each and every boundary scenarios okay so these are the major tips i would give to the freshers out there especially in 2021 and it's going to work because a lot of my students have been beneficial from this points so i hope you will also be beneficial now one of the bonus tip which i am going to share is very important uh it could be demotivating but i'm not i don't mean to demotivate but this tip definitely works i have seen many people who blindly wait for an opportunity in the field of data science and analytics and in that faith that they will get a job soon they lose 6 months 9 months 12 months of their of their life so if you do that it all depends if your if your priorities are that that you have to get a job in data science probably you can wait for 6 months 9 months or 12 months but the problem is that if you wait for 12 months or if you wait for 9 months you see that gap in your resume right so it's very difficult i know that it's very difficult but my take on this is never be restricted to data science and analytics itself if you know python start applying for python developer roles if you know something about sql start applying for uh, db related 
fresher jobs or data analysis roles or business analysis roles or uh, any support roles anything because first job for a fresher is very important once you get started with your first job you can easily do a transition to data science analytics cloud devops whatever you feel like you can do that that's possible so first job is very important so you have to take your decisions very carefully that's my bonus tip for you all i hope you like it uh that's it for today's video guys i wanted to make it very simple i wanted to make it very quick as well uh i will also have some videos uh, on experienced professionals but uh, uh but giving generic ideas or generic feedback for experienced professionals is a bit difficult because for experienced people uh it all depends upon their existing roles i mean my views my suggestions change from candidate to candidate that is the reason it's very difficult to form a video for experienced professionals but in case you are an experienced professional and if, if you need some guidance probably you can get in touch with me on my linkedin and we will we will have a discussion on that so that's it for today's video guys if you like this video please like share and subscribe and please hit the bell icon to get notified on my future videos as well thank you